Michael Clark up. Hello everyone. Uh, Come with Quest uh, one of Tina, Joe Cook, Peace by the Tina. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the chief of the people of uh, Splatseen. My Indian name for my great great grandfather is uh, Big Voice Who Speaks the Truth. What can I say? Here we are, one year later after COVID started. And, uh, I want to thank each and every one of you that have uh, really helped to uh, keep it out of our community for over a year. If you think about what's happened all around us for a year, this uh, pandemic has been growing. And the numbers have been growing, whether it's across Canada, whether it's in British Columbia, in the United States, around the world. But for our community here, we've been able to uh, keep the COVID virus out of our community for at least a year. You got to be commended for doing what you, you needed to do to protect yourself and your family, your vulnerable ones, the old people in your family, and the little ones. Uh, congratulate yourself. You know, it's a, it's a hard job. And I, I know that many of you uh, feel a lot of stress. It's hard to, uh, because you're not interacting with others. Uh, they call it COVID fatigue. And, just know and understand, just right around the corner of spring and you'll be able to get outside pretty soon. I think you got to look forward to the spring and, you know, digging around in the dirt if you do gardens. And start looking, you know, at those kinds of things. Just think ahead. Uh, that's what I've been doing. I've been planning ahead, thinking, oh, what do I need to do when the, as soon as the snow goes? What can I do here, you know, prepare my garden? What am I going to grow in my garden this year? And start planting, uh, you know, sort of laying that out. Uh, what plants can I start in uh, inside my house? Because uh, last year I just did it from seeds. Maybe I'll do something different this year. So think about that. I know it's difficult at this time, but think about that because uh, it'll help you get through this next little bit. It has been very stressful for people because without the social interaction, it's very difficult. But always remember that it's been important because you've uh, wore your masks in public. You've uh, socially distanced, not gathered, you've uh, used hand sanitizer, you've done all those things for over a year and you've kept yourself, your family and the community safe. You have to be commended for that. So just think about that for a minute because you've done a good job. I want to say uh, to all those uh, of you that have lost loved ones at this time, it's been very difficult for you and us as a community. Because as you know, one of the things that uh, we always try to do is help people out. We've done as much as we can uh, so that the immediate family could bury their loved ones and do whatever services are needed for their loved ones. I ask and say that our prayers are still with you and it's very difficult for us that can't come in uh, because we do, we help, help each other at the time of burials. We haven't been able to do that. Uh, just know and understand that uh, you're all in our prayers and ask blessings for you and your family as you go forward. I think it's really important at this time that you think about that. As of today, the numbers we have, we have zero active cases. And I know that we went into a, a state of emergency here just recently. There was concern, and I think, uh, again, because of the preventative measures that we've issued and people are doing, you know, wearing a mask, uh, you know, staying at home, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, if you go out in public, hand sanitizer, uh, physically distancing from each other, all of those things, you've been doing those things that uh, the numbers have sort of uh, gone to zero at this point. So keep that up, you know, and uh, just uh, remember that uh, the public health orders that are in place right now, there's zero gatherings of any kind. And I hope that, uh, I know people are having a hard time. If you've got a big family, it's very difficult because uh, when they talk about your family, it's who's living in your house, that that's your immediate bubble. And if uh, you allow people in that bubble, there's potential for other family members from other communities coming in and bringing that virus into your home. So you gotta be very, very careful. And especially for the older ones, uh, just understand that, uh, just look after yourself and really uh, understand that the uh, preventative measures we're taking today will save lives uh, for tomorrow. Just do that and understand that is very, very important.
you know, if you're sick, uh, self-isolate. You know, and there's a 1-800 line, uh, help line that we can call. So anything that you need to look at in terms of the actual uh, test or the self uh, diagnose or self-assessment that they call it, uh, there's different tools available to you online and uh, by a phone call. But if you are sick, stay at home. And if nothing else, call the health center. Call the staff there and they'll help you through whatever you need. And there are even doctors that are available online uh, that uh, if you don't have a doctor, I know it's a big concern for people that you can't get to your doctor. There are resources available. So if you contact our health staff at the health center, they're able to get that information to you. Simply because it's a really an important time in terms of we're going into this next phase, uh, the vaccination part, of, and we have to prepare ourselves. Uh, vaccinations, there's been lots of discussion, you've seen it on the media, you've seen what's happening across the world and in Canada with the uh, access to vaccinations. And the first thing I want to say is this, is that uh, if you have any concerns whatsoever, contact your doctor. If you do not have a family doctor, there is a doctor available online. They can actually give you information and answer the questions that you have about taking the vaccine. It's really important you're informed and that you feel really comfortable and you really have to look after yourself in that way. I myself will be contacting my family doctor because of uh, underlying health issues that I have and asking him, is it safe to take the vaccine? Because that's the, the smart thing to do. You can't uh, underestimate why, what may or may not happen. The best thing is get the facts. So if you do not have a family doctor, again, through the health center, there are numbers available, there are doctors available, and you can, I think it's called Dial-A-Doc, I can't really remember the terminology, but it's, you can actually talk, you know, call a doctor and talk to them, and they'll give you all the information you need to, to do for a vaccination process, and it's really important. Our, health uh, team here at uh, Split Scene has been uh, getting all prepared for the vaccination process. Uh, what they're telling me that we won't get very much notice if it does come into the community like 24 hours. So understand this that once the vaccines come in we're going to be sending information out and, and whatever the process is that the health staff has put together we'll get that information out ASAP and ensure that all those people within the community that are wanting to take the vaccine are able to take it. And our health staff is looking after those that are actually in their homes and be able to do the most vulnerable in their homes. So we're looking at all kinds of different ways we make sure that the vaccine is available to each and every one of you. So just remember that it is about your choice and what you do with it. And that you need, uh, like, I, like I will do, is contact my own physician, my doctor, and ask him some questions around it. And uh, he'll let me know what, what, uh, what it's all about. And the same with yourself. If you have doubts, do that. If you have no doubt, then just sign right up and take the vaccine. So, again, I ask you at this time to think about those things. But most importantly, think about spring. Spring's almost on us. I know it's going to be cold this week. And, uh, but uh, it, weather is going to turn and get outside once it turns and get your gardens ready. Do whatever you knew, need to do to get your uh, hands in the dirt. You know, and that Mother Earth heals and you, you work with the dirt and you grow your own food. It has a way of helping you and I think that's the, the things we need as uh, we hope that by the end of uh, this summer uh, into the fall that uh, this uh, pandemic will be at the point where we don't have to worry about it. But I think we still have to take those precautions, uh, uh, the precautionary measures of wearing a mask in public, hand sanitizer, you know, those kinds of things like that, uh, keeping physical distance from people, you know, keeping uh, your gatherings only within your immediate family and those types of things. Very, very important things. Like I said, it's taken over a year for it to get here. You need to commend yourself and the work that you've done. 
especially those young mothers and uh, young families, it's been hard on you. Uh, staying isolated with your families inside your homes is very, very difficult. I can't imagine sometimes the stress that is upon you and just uh, hope that you can work with your family and uh, work through this at this time. So again, uh, take care, uh, look after yourself, because when you look after yourself, you look after your family and you look after the vulnerable ones, your old ones in your family, and you look after the community. That's what you've been doing for a year now, and we continue uh, to ask you to do the same thing. Uh, Koch Shem, uh, and all my relatives.